Hey Cass. Hey Sam, how are you? I am so good, how are you? Really, really good. I'm so excited. This is our first interview of season two. So we're back chatting and yeah, I'm just so, so, so super pumped about our guest today. Me too. We have the beautiful Joanna Tolly, who I know because I've actually done a Reiki course from her. She's a Reiki master teacher. She's a yoga teacher. She's a beautiful spiritual person living a creative life. So, so perfect to welcome on the podcast. And welcome, Joanna. We're so happy that you're here. Hi, Sam. Hi, Cass. Thank you so much for having me. Really, really excited for our conversation today. Oh, we're so happy to have you. And I have pulled a card, as we do for all our guests. I know that you're also a fan of the Dreamy Moons card. Absolutely. So I have pulled that deck. Love <laughs> yes. that. Beautiful. So this card is, this moment will be a mere memory one day. Are you making the most of it? Mm. Beautiful little card. <laughs> Dear human, the most real thing you will ever experience is the present. Past memories and visions of the future live in your head. You are here now and everything else is uncertain. What is most certain is the present and what you choose to do with it. Such a beautiful card for for anyone to receive at any time, isn't it? Like that reminder Mm -hmm. of just Mm -hmm. being present for us all to enjoy this moment, Mm -hmm. recording together, for you listening to be present in this moment. Um, But I did also pull it with the intention to support your journey and story that you're going to share today. So that will be really interesting to hear how that resonates with you when you're sharing your life and how you've come to have this creative business that you have. Yeah. So Joanna, can you give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself and and what you do? Sure. So my name's Joanna. And as Sam said, I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a Reiki master teacher and a Reiki practitioner and a sacred ceremony holder for women's circles, mama blessings, mixed gender circles, really anything and everything that you would want to bring a richness, a ritual and magic into. So that's something that I do as well that I really love. And I feel like my mission here on earth is to help people to really remember who they are at a soul level to really come into alignment with their true essence and tap into their own innate healing power. So I'm here to, rather than to say, I'm here to heal you, I'm here to empower you to step into that self-healing. That's amazing. Oh, I love that so much. That resonates deeply. It's just so much more powerful when you're empowering somebody else to do that for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're just handing so, that power over to something external to you rather than remembering mm-hmm. we all we all have these gifts, you know, we all have the power to heal ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Did you yes. always know that you wanted to do this, Joanna? Like what was your journey into this field? Mm, I was introduced to energy healing and yoga actually by my mom. So hi, mom. I'm sure she's going to listen to this. <laughs> Um, yeah, so mama. very blessed to have a mom who was so open to those type of things. Uh, she actually took me to an energy healer at the age of 11, which was a really powerful experience um, and a past life healing that I received. And that healer, um, her name is Su Zhang, I believe, from memory. And she actually told me at that time that I was going to be a healer. But of course, at the age of 11, that didn't really mean a lot to me. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, But of course, that has kept dropping back into my awareness throughout my journey and just realizing, wow, um, this really has been my path and my destiny before I even realized or understood what that means. Yeah. And then I really, really stepped into... Uh, this evolution of my being, I would say in 2018, when I first did my yoga teacher training and my Reiki level one, that was a big year of really, really diving in to all these things that have been niggling away at me for years and years. You know, I'd been feeling that pull and feeling that call, um, but perhaps being a little bit stuck in 
the corporate world and all the things that yeah. I was doing before that, which I feel like a lot yeah. of people will resonate with. And, you know, you don't feel like you've got the time or the space to do the things that you love. But I reached that point in 2018 where it just felt like I didn't have a choice anymore. And I was really pulled yeah. and called into doing those trainings. And yeah, life has never been the same again since and no looking back. Yes. Did you ease into that from your corporate world? Because a lot of the time, um, yeah, in that journey, like it's quite scary for our minds to be like, okay, I'm just going to like leave everything behind and jump ship. Um, yes. Yeah. Did you like just gradually introduce that until it was sort of full time? Yes. So I started off teaching part time. I was teaching two classes a week for about a year while I was still in my corporate job. And then after that first year of really building up my experience and my confidence with teaching, then it felt like time to make the leap, which was absolutely terrifying, but at the same time just felt like there was no other option. I knew that this is what I needed to do. Yeah, I could feel it in my heart and my soul and like every cell in my being um, that now is the time. And so I actually went overseas. I went to Cambodia so that I could immerse myself in teaching every day without needing to think about the realities of paying rent in Sydney, which is where I was living for 10 years. Um, So that was really my kind of deep initiation into, okay, now I am a yoga teacher and allowing myself to evolve Mm. into that truest identity of myself. Yeah. Beautiful. And was this around the same time that you discovered Reiki more deeply in terms of you actually training to do it yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I did my level one training for Reiki the same year, 2018, that I did my yoga teacher training. Yeah. So they've really come sort of in tandem alongside each other, yeah. the embodiment practice, the physical aspect of the yoga practice, as well as the philosophy. And then tying that mm. in with the energetics of Reiki, it was that kind of double-edged sword for me, both of those things together, that has really seen big shifts in me personally. Um, mm. So I went on quite an express journey with Reiki. I did Reiki level one and then Reiki level two really quickly after that. and. My beautiful teacher, Athena Bailey, said, you know, usually I don't initiate masters this quickly, but I was just like, I know I'm on the right path. Like this has to happen right now. And she could see that I was ready and I had her full support, which was really amazing. Um, And I just knew that I needed to be sharing this gift with other people as quickly as possible because I could feel how much it had transformed my own life in terms of Mm -hmm. letting go of limiting beliefs, letting go of toxic patterns of behavior around alcohol or toxic relationships, all this kind of stuff. As soon as I was attuned to level one, all of that lower vibrational stuff in my life just began to fall away. And I was it like, it really happens. Doesn't yeah. It? So Sam, <laughs> cause I've has recently experienced, experienced this. Did you want to share a little bit about how you've experienced that? Oh, it definitely just make, it just brings up anything that's like bubbling under the surface that you feel like you know I'm the type of person that's been working on my stuff and personal development and alignment for years and you you know you think you get to a point where you're like I'm I'm doing all right like it's all right (laughs) and then boom (laughs) yeah these things just show up and and then put pregnancy on top of that Mm. and there's like a lot to 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 show up and deal with but it's so powerful because I can see things falling away yeah things that aren't meant um that don't align anymore like very tangibly falling away um so it's almost like it's propelling you into that new Mm -hmm. vibration absolutely so the attunement as you know but for the listeners who might not know this the attunement to Reiki and the attunement's up level each time like they're more powerful so you've done your level one when you do your level two you get another attunement when you do master practitioner you get another attunement master teacher it just keeps increasing the attunements actually permanently raise your vibration so as your vibration is raised to this new level it's any of those things that are vibrating lower they just don't resonate with you anymore so they can't help but to fall away 
And then you mm-hmm. become a magnet for things of a higher vibration. So you're in this new mm-hmm. place of alignment for soul clients or a new job or a new relationship mm-hmm. or a new home, whatever it is that is resonating with this new evolution of your being, it just starts to flow towards mm-hmm. you. But in order for that to happen, the other stuff has to fall away. So it's generally yeah. a big catalyst for people on their healing journey. So I'm so pleased to hear yes. that you've been leaning into that. Sam and welcoming that yes, evolution. <laughs> no yeah. other way but That's through it. it. So Absolutely. Leaving it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Joanna, how would you explain Reiki to anyone listening that's like, I don't really know sure. what they're talking about. What is this? How would you explain it? Yeah. So Reiki is an energy healing modality. It was channeled by a man called Mikao Yasui in Japan in 1922. The word Reiki itself means universal life force. So when a person is attuned to Reiki, which is what we've just been talking about, they become a channel for this universal life force. It's pure source energy. It's the frequency of unconditional love to flow through them. And then you have that ability to channel that just for yourself into your own being. Or as a practitioner, once you've done level two, once you're a practitioner level, that ability to channel that into a client who's in front of you, who's come to you for help. So this high frequency, unconditional love energy is flowing into the energy body, the aura and the chakra system, the energy centers that we all have. And it's clearing out any stuck, stagnant energies that are vibrating at a lower frequency. So for example, unprocessed emotions or maybe emotions that don't even belong to you that you've picked up and you've been carrying around for goodness knows how long Mm. Uh, anything that you might be holding on to that's no longer serving you the reiki actually goes in and transmutes those darker denser energies into light so it acts as an energetic reset and it brings you back into your natural essence your natural state of balance and harmony within yourself And being held in that frequency of unconditional love is super calming for your nervous system. Um, So it brings Mm -hmm. you out of that heightened state. Most of us are living our lives a lot of the time in fight or flight or freeze. It brings you into that deep state of rest and digest, which is your optimal state for self-healing, which means it's really beneficial if you experience anxiety or insomnia or you're wanting to let go of old patterns of behavior old programs such as maybe a lack mindset, anything really that you're holding on to that's no longer serving you. So the Reiki energy itself is an intelligent energy. It goes in there. It's like a light shining a torch on those darker areas and just transmuting and dissolving it all, bringing you back to your pure essence. Mm, It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful energy thing to experience Mm. that is hard to explain you've explained it beautifully though (laughs) but to experience it is so nice and it is something that you can be in person for or even do remotely so yes Cass actually had a session with you remotely yeah yeah and I didn't know what to expect or yeah it's one thing to explain it I suppose and another thing to feel it and experience it um and we did it remotely Joanna um Do you find that there is any difference between in person, like you were explaining how you were, you actually like sometimes touch or just hover your hand over in person and, oh, you can explain how how we did it in Zoom if you like, just so people can sort of get a visual for how they could potentially have a session. Yeah, sure. Firstly, thanks so much for trusting me with your energy yesterday. It was really, really beautiful to connect in that way. Um, Yeah, so Reiki is mostly seen as a hands-on healing. So when I talked about the practitioner becoming a channel for the energy, the energy comes down through the crown chakra into the heart, down the energy meridians of the arms and into the hands. So most often it takes the form of hands-on healing with the client right in front of me. And in that case, my hands are working in the energy body. So they're kind of hovering above the physical body for the most part. And then you can incorporate, if the person feels comfortable with that physical touch, you can incorporate hands resting onto parts of the body to help 
move and shift tension, the, the blocked energy that's manifesting as tension, pain in the physical body. And it also just feels really nurturing and really grounding to be held by a loving set of hands in that way. That's something that most of us don't receive often enough being held in that unconditional love. But as it is universal life force energy, it doesn't subscribe to the man-made concepts of time and space. So that's why I don't need the person to be right in front of me, although it is beautiful to experience it one-on-one, you know, to come into a sacred healing space with me um, or with another practitioner, but you don't need that to happen. So the way that we did it, Cass, via Zoom, for me, there is no difference because there is no separation, right? So when we think about universal life force, that's a reminder that we all are that. There's actually no separation between me and you or the fact that I'm in New South Wales and you're in Queensland. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah because we're all actually <laughs> yeah. one. And the separation yeah. that we create is just a human way of understanding the world yeah. and the universe. Yeah. So the energy, it doesn't need to travel. Like it doesn't take a few hours to drive up the highway from New South Wales to Queensland. Like as soon as I hold my intention, the intention that the Reiki is flowing to you, I close my eyes and I get into my meditative state and it just feels to me as if your energy is right in front of me. And how did that feel to you, Cass? Could you feel it in a tangible way? I don't even... Yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. I just think every single person should go do it. (laughs) (laughs) Make it up for me right there. Thanks for that. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone book in with Joanna. Um, But to experience for the first time with you was so amazing. So thank you so much. Um, And it was very relaxing. Like I have had kinesiology before, which is different again um, with muscle testing and and that sort of thing. Um, but this time, like, yeah, I laid on the floor so, and, and I tilted my screen so that Joanna could see me and I was fully relaxed. And yeah, I just really um, slipped into that, like, beautiful, um, r- really deep resting state. I didn't fall asleep. Joanna's like, you might fall asleep. I didn't fall asleep, but I could definitely, like, feel tension in areas where I felt heavy. My mind had been going, like, quite a lot in those last few days just with um you know launching my course kids going back to school like there was just so much like active in life and so I felt really heavy in my head um for a little bit of it and then I I felt that heaviness go to my my hands on my chest and it was sort of like just dispersing through my body and I was going in and out of thought during it as well um but if anything I just the whole time just kept feeling like more and more relaxed the whole time and then yeah, slept my most amazing sleep that night um and yeah still feeling the effects of just tiredness and you know can feel that integration happening but um i think the biggest thing that i took away from it was something that you said before too sam was that you know we can we can think that we're doing all this work all this, like we think we're doing the energetic work, but a lot of the time we're doing the work, um, the spiritual work with our mind. Mm -hmm. And we can be like, yeah, I I think like that. I'm, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I follow my intuition. I I think positively. I, you know, do, but we're still doing that with our mind. And the reminder for me was just all the different things that came up during our session was that just because your mind thinks that you're doing it a certain way, the energy that is in your field or the energy that your body's holding can tell the truth or the real story of what's going on. And I found that I was holding old stories and old limiting beliefs in my body and in my energy field, even though my mind thought, hang on a second, I thought I'd got rid of that belief, you know, but it, it turned out that I hadn't got rid of that belief. And that was holding my vibration lower in certain areas. And so that was like, oh, that's so amazing because I felt like that's something that I couldn't control in a way. Like it's like, uh, you know, I, I, how how would I shift that mm. energy myself like without going through that process? Um, so my question from like an outsider would be like, obviously you're doing your training, Sam, and, um, you know, but as a someone who receives Reiki, like is there anything that we can do to help ourselves energetically 
Um, or do we keep getting Reiki or <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do I book you in once a month, Joe? <laughs> you definitely can do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think something that just came up for me when you were talking is, you know, as, as I said at the start, I'm here to empower people to find their own, their own power of self-healing, but at the same time, we all need help. So yes, you've been doing yeah. the work, yes. you've done such beautiful work already on yourself, but our energy stores the memories and the imprints and kind of the last little bits of shadow. And we all need sometimes to ask people for support. So whether that's me, for myself, I have two beautiful healers um, who I go to quite frequently. So Yes, we all have the power, but yes, we're also here to live in community and to support each other. Mm -hmm. To go back to your question of how everyone can help themselves, um, I'm actually going to be offering a free recorded process to your listeners that will be available on my website. So we can put the link to that in the show notes. And it's a process called the pillar of light. So it's something that I do every morning for myself to ground my energy, to really connect down into the energy of Mother Earth because we are of the earth, but so often we forget that connection. So just reminding yourself of that feeling of being held, of Earth's abundance, of that energy that we are actually designed as an energetic being to draw that energy up from the earth to replenish ourselves daily. So you begin by drawing that up into the body and then you connect up into source energy, the universe, whatever it is that resonates with you and draw that down into your energy. And then you're using the earth energy and the universal energy to clear away with your intention any energy you're holding on to that's not, that doesn't belong to you, anything that's not serving you. So each day it's like taking a shower, but for your energy body. And then you use Mm -hmm. those frequencies of the earth and the universe to create a beautiful bubble a boundary of protection around you i feel that a lot of people listening to this podcast will resonate with being empaths aka taking on the energy or the emotions of everyone around them and that's Mm -hmm. actually a really beautiful gift but it can feel like not so much of a gift if you're not clearing yourself daily if you're not protecting yourself from other people's projections and all of the stuff that we're all carrying around then you can be left feeling really depleted and really heavy yeah. so this process the pillar of light process that you'll have access to the beauty of it is that it's so simple and it combines grounding, clearing and protecting all in one. So you don't need to be doing like three separate rituals. You can just sit for, I think the recording is about seven minutes. Um, So it's not a huge amount of time that you need to take each day. And just remembering this basic energetic hygiene, or I shouldn't even say remembering because we're not taught it to begin with. Like I wish that we were taught this stuff at school. Um, maybe that needs to be one of my life goals to get get energetic hygiene into schools. Um, but I feel like with so many conscious parents coming through, such as yourselves, Mm. passing these things Mm. down onto their kids, this is how some of us who are parents are going to help change the world. So thank you for that, both of you. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that's that's the main thing, like taking responsibility for your own energy and knowing that you don't need to be carrying around all this stuff all the time. And that it's very, energy work is really quite simple. Your energy responds to your intention and you hold more power than you realise in that. Um, So you don't need to always be coming back for Reiki. But like I said before, we could all do with a bit of support, you know, for your mind, you'll go to see a therapist. So for your energy, what is it that you're doing to support yourself, whether that's on your own or seeking out help when you need it? Mm. Yeah. And I think Mm. another thing that came up too was like that connection to your intuition, right? So, you know, what we spoke about a lot in my session was that, you know, you know, a lot of the things that you were saying that came up, I was sort of saying, Oh, yep. I've heard that from my intuition. Oh, yep. <laughs> and I'm like, I know that. <laughs> I should be like doing something yes. about it or changing it over. And yeah. I think, um, yeah, like practicing and strengthening that connection um, to the to your inner voice and to your gut feeling and to your intuition, like to me was that reminder of, 
you know, like listen to it. Mm. Um, it's, 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 even though it's a quiet voice, it's still there for a reason and it's trying to guide you and help you. So yeah, for me, I was like, oh, damn it. Like <laughs> um, I you know, need to listen to that more. Like, cause I know that those things are there and you know, my mind just wants to take over. Mm. Oh, it's so true. It's funny to hear you say that, Cass, because I, I gave a reading to a friend a few days ago and last night she said the same thing to me. She's like, everything you brought up, I thought, <laughs> I oh, knew. I do know this. Yeah. I have felt this, but I've pushed it aside. And <laughs> it's just so true that we all know inside ourselves Deep like down. every yeah. single time. And I I was thinking this before and you said it too, Joanna, that it really is that simple it this this energy work is actually simple it doesn't need to feel big or overwhelming or complicated and and, you know this process of doing um like a clearing protecting your energy you know five minutes of your day is not a lot and the impact is huge and it is very simple and the more that you start to do it like if you listen to joanna's um recording what will happen is you'll start to just embody it yourself and find mm-hmm. ways that that resonate with you you might mm-hmm. see a different color you might feel something different hear something different and then you'll be able to do this yourself all the time and it has a huge impact I, I noticed that I was always just doing it when I was in service doing readings but once I changed that and was doing it daily just for myself my oh, like my nervous system was like a sigh of relief. Like you just feel so much better. And then it's like this little tool that you have where um, like we were travelling for 10 days over Christmas and I would go into like a petrol station or like a public toilet or, you know, supermarket and just see this light and protect myself going into it. And that's very simple. That's not a big, long thing to do. You know, you're just moving differently through the world Mm. in a way that really helps yourself I love to hear you say that Sam and you're exactly right when you say you can start to embody it and make it your own and when you do that becomes even more powerful because if you're relying on the way that I'm teaching it then it's still coming from Mm. outside of you but as you start to make it your Mm. own it's coming from your intention it's authentically coming from within that's when it gets even stronger. Mm. And as soon as I came to Coffs, I found a really beautifully aligned space and community at a yoga studio called Coffs Yoga and Pilates. And it's in Karora on the north side of Coffs. And the owners, Lauren and Kai, they'd both done some Reiki training themselves. And they're really keen to refresh their own training and to offer it to their community. So as soon as I had that conversation with Lauren, I just knew like, oh, this is the place. Like, thank yeah. you, universe. I knew you were going to provide for yeah. me. I was a little bit scared there for a moment, but <laughs> it immediately came through and I was just presented with this beautiful space and these beautiful people yeah. who were going to yeah, help to support me in putting my offerings out there. So feeling so blessed for that. And yeah. as I still had my following in Sydney, I had all these clients who were keen to do their training with me. I actually spent the whole of 2022 traveling back and forth between Sydney and Coffs offering my level one and two training. So felt like I was leveraging that existing business that I had in Sydney to help support that transition. And while I was building the new relationships and the new community in Coffs and it's worked out beautifully. And I can absolutely say that I'm in the right place. I made the right move. I'm in the right place to flourish like personally, as well as in my business and to yeah. slow down from that hectic city life that I was a part of for so long. So I feel like yeah. I'm still in the process of slowing down and getting into this new ease and flow that feels really present and alive for me here in this new space. So, yeah, that was a big nudge and a big practice in yeah. trust. Did you have to move away from family like in Sydney? My chosen family, yes, although interestingly 
around the same time, a couple of my really close friends had already moved away. So one of them had moved up to the Gold Coast a few months before and one of them had moved to Coffs. So that was one of the big nudges because she was on the phone wow. telling me, it's so beautiful up here. I didn't realize how beautiful it was. You need to come. So it was like another, that another was clue one of the things follow. Yeah, that yeah. was pulling me and also helped a lot to know that I would know someone here, a beautiful, supportive yeah. soul, um, that I wouldn't be here and knowing no one at all. Um, but yeah, I did absolutely. have to leave my family behind when I first moved over here from the UK. So yeah, already yeah. gone through that. That was probably the biggest leap, I guess, moving I to the other say, side of the world. Was another big nudge <laughs> to move countries. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually um, something that I knew but didn't know how I knew it because perhaps I wasn't so tapped into what my intuition was. But from about the age yeah. of 16, I just had this knowing that I was going to live in Australia and I had no idea how or why that was going to happen mm-hmm. and eventually did happen in the classic pommy backpacker way when I was 24 I just came over (laughs) and I was saying to my family I'm just going to go for two years but even then I actually knew deep down (laughs) that I was never going back so I've definitely always because that's a lot of people's story in Australia oh 100% yeah it's very cliche for a holiday (laughs) (laughs) but deep down you knew yeah Yeah, and I didn't know why, it just felt like, and I didn't know how I was going to get a visa or stay or anything. I just knew, and having that deep belief, everything just worked out. So, yeah. So if that's not a big sign to trust. That's it. (laughs) It's still challenging. It's It's still challenging. It is, isn't it? Our mind is like, no. (laughs) Yeah. All the all the ifs and buts and fears and everything comes up and but hundred percent yeah it's just takes um it's a it's a muscle right like to keep t- practicing to trust that and then proving to yourself it works out and going oh okay I I followed it and it worked out so let's trust the next nudge and yes. see what happens yes <laughs> it starts to become easier the more and more that you see how life just aligns so beautifully in front of you when yeah. you do listen. Yeah. And with the next question, Joanna, you probably have answered it um, in, you know, such a beautiful way, but, you know, creative entrepreneurship um, is not always the the easiest path, especially doing it solo. So um, what gets you out of bed every day and really excited to do what you do? I'm sure, you know, healing all these souls is (laughs) a big part part of it, but, um, you know, there's still the business side as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it certainly does have its challenges. Um, I think when I went through that spiritual awakening, that big year that I've been speaking of in 2018, and I knew that I was being called to be a healer and be of service, I actually had this moment when I said to source, creator, whatever you want to call it, I said, okay, I get it. Like, I'm ready. Please use me and guide me in service of the light. And since that, since I made that declaration to the universe, to myself, I have felt so supported as I've just been speaking about, almost carried Mm -hmm. and really energized by something that's much greater than me. So when you talk Mm -hmm. about getting out of bed in the morning, I honestly feel like I don't have a choice in the best possible way. It's not like I'm being forced, (laughs) you know, It's, it's a really beautiful feeling, but it's like, I just have to do what I have to do. And when I do it, when I teach a yoga class, when I see a Reiki client, when I'm teaching Reiki, when I'm running a women's circle, whatever it is, it really lights me up and it fills me up energetically. And that's how you know that it's the right thing. And when I see students like Sam experiencing Reiki flowing through them for that first time and just the look on their face when they go, oh, I can do it. This is a real thing. This is really (laughs) happening. And just noticing that moment in a level one training, it's just priceless. It's pure magic. And it honestly brings tears to my eyes every single time. And it just feels like such a privilege to be able to share something that has been so transformative for me and having that positive impact on people's lives. Because when you impact one person, you're not only impacting that one person, you raising your vibration by receiving a healing, by doing the training, even by just coming to a yoga class, 
that shift in the energy that you carry out has such a ripple effect to the people around you in your home and in the wider community. Like it has a much bigger ripple effect than we even realize. So yeah. even if I were to only impact one person in my entire career, that would be enough because the ripple effect from that is huge. So it's really, yeah, yeah I feel like I'm getting a bit emotional even just saying that. Like I it know, feels like too. such an yeah. honour. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. so, yeah. so lucky and blessed. And obviously there's hard work that's gone into it. You know, like you said, there's still yeah. a business aspect. I'm still here, yeah. you know, doing all the yeah. admin side of I things. Doing a business. <laughs> yeah, so still running yeah. a business, but just, yeah, feeling very, very privileged to be able to do what I do and to be able to share it mm-hmm. and share it with your listeners. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. Mm, No, thank you. You're welcome. So amazing. I know um, from being in service myself with giving readings, Joanna, that it becomes even more important to look after your own energy. Do you have some kind of daily practice that you do um, to protect your energy, care for yourself and fill yourself up so that you can keep showing up and serving so much. Yeah, hundred percent. I would say that actually implementing a morning ritual every single morning has been the biggest game changer for myself personally and in my business. I used to be a little bit ad hoc about it and, you know, not mind too much if I skip today, but really feeling fully embodied in what it is that I'm teaching has made such a huge difference. So every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is make a cup of cacao and I go sit out on my Mm. beautiful balcony that overlooks the ocean here at Valor Beach. I'm in a really magical spot and I actually just sit. I just sit and look at the view taste the cacao, notice how I'm feeling in my body and I let myself just be for a good five or ten minutes before I do anything because even a meditation practice and energy practice is still doing something. So I just let Mm. myself be for a little while while I'm just awakening Mm. and noticing like how grateful I am to be sitting there and how beautiful it is. So that's the first thing. Then I do the pillar of light energetic process that we've been talking about. And then I connect to my spiritual team. So I ask my higher self, my spirit guides, any angels or light beings that wish to connect and offer their guidance to me for the day. And I stay as open as possible to receiving that with no judgment and no story from my intellectual mind as to why I'm hearing (laughs) these things, which is a practice. Um, And sometimes light language comes through me as I'm receiving, like I ask to receive any downloads or codes that I need to come into my best alignment for the day. So for any listeners who don't know what light language is, it's just another way of channeling energy in a similar way that I've spoken to about channeling Uh, universal life force for Reiki. Light language is you're channeling source energy, but it comes through you as sounds that you speak out. And it sounds a little bit like a different language that you've never heard before. Sometimes it sounds a little bit like singing, but it's just another way of, of channeling energy essentially. So that's something that I've been, I've found coming through me more and more. And I didn't particularly ask for that to happen. It just started happening in the mornings. And I was like, cool, this feels really good. Um, and then I get on my yoga mat and I do some kind of embodiment practice. So sometimes it's a feminine embodiment practice, which I learned from a teacher called Tiffany Cowley. She's, um, at evoke the deep feminine on Instagram. She's a really beautiful teacher. Uh, so sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes it's a yoga practice, which could be like a really strong flow or it could be yin yoga. Like it really depends, you know, I'm listening to what my body needs on that day. Other days it will be a Pilates workout or a strength workout, just something, whatever it is my body's asking for to get me out of my head and into my body (laughs) (laughs) because our feminine (laughs) wisdom in particular lives in our body. And I think with a Mm. lot of spiritual practices, there can be this tendency to, want to transcend the body or to think that 
there's somewhere outside of the body that's somehow better to be in these higher realms or these higher dimensions. And there can be a tendency in the spiritual community to forget that your Mm -hmm. physical body is a spiritual vessel. And so Mm -hmm. any self-care needs to begin there. It needs to begin in a grounded physical way. So you need to be grounded in your being, connected to your body. And the more grounded and connected to your body you are, actually the easier it is to connect to your higher self, Mm -hmm. to your guides, to all those things that I'm speaking about. So always do something to get into my body. And then most days, hopefully if I have time before whatever my first thing is of the day, I'll go down to the beach and jump in the ocean. And I do that with a lot of intention. I actually ask the water spirits to assist me in clearing, cleansing, rejuvenating my energy for my day. Mm -hmm. And it feels like an act of devotion or remembering of that connection to nature. So I try to do that every day Mm -hmm. if I can as well. So it sounds like quite a lot, right, that I do every day. (laughs) (laughs) and I remember listening to other people's morning rituals and feeling so overwhelmed and like wow how do they have enough time to do all of those things and of course everyone's situation is different particularly if you have kids you're probably not going to have as much time but just the act of committing whether it is five minutes or two hours it doesn't matter committing that time for yourself shows the universe that you're prioritizing you first and it like Mm, you said sam it's so important for those of us in service whether you're healing doing readings whatever it is that you're doing you have to have your cup filled up first Mm. and i've learned that with experience because as i said i used to not be so dedicated with this practice and i would have moments Mm. of serving from a place of depletion and it just does not feel good at all so you need I also learned the hard way (laughs) and then once you've learned the lesson you're like there's no way I'm going back to that right ever yeah Yeah. (laughs) and once you feel that way of living in overflow there is so much flowing out of me that I've got that capacity to give Mm -hmm. it just absolutely Mm -hmm. changes everything yeah so beautiful Yeah, which is a big reminder for mums too, I think, is that, you know, sometimes it's not as easy to keep remembering that because you're just, you know, you just naturally put your kids before everything, before yourself. God, you guys are going to have to remind me (laughs) (laughs) to do something. I feel like I remember and then like I go through another stage and then you forget and then you're like, oh, yeah, that's right, I need to fill my cup back up. And then, Mm. you know, like it's just like that constant back and forward because kids go through different stages of you know neediness and waking up early or bedwetting or like they they go through their own stages so then you know your priorities change and yeah it's just a you know a constant um weaving and trying to um you know figure out how to fit it in some in some stages yeah you might be able to fit your 10 minutes you know in in the afternoon or at night yes. sometimes it might be in the morning like so it's like like you said, it doesn't have to be a long period of time, but where can you carve out the time based on your life, you know? Yeah, and allowing yourself to be flexible with where that lands in the day. Yeah, yeah that's really important yeah. too. So thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> Very much <interesting> right <laughs> Um And back to, to the, the business side of things, Joe. like um, we love to um, ask our guests and for our guests to share like with their business, like, um, how they've done things in maybe in like in a non-typical business way, which might sound funny, but you know you're very in, intuitive, so I think that um, really helps you helps guide you with your your business and and leaning into what feels right. But you know we we're trying to get um, you know our listeners out of this like you have to do X Y and Z to succeed, mm. and it could be with the way you interact with your clients, your client experience, or your marketing or something. But doing something in a way that may seem like you know just not the norm, but it really works for you um, and and what you've created. Sure, it's a beautiful question. I feel like doing things not in the typical business ways just a daily occurrence for me. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that might be the case. Yeah. So I think a typical business mindset would have me doing, in inverted commas, a lot more, like hustling mm-hmm. more in terms of marketing, mm-hmm. social media, all the things. And in reality, I do very little in those areas. But clients and students always find me because I am yeah. in alignment and I'm always putting my vibration and my self-care first. And so when you do that, not only you're in this place of overflow, but you actually become a beacon, like a light mm-hmm. shoots up into the universe and your soul clients and soul students or whoever they are that you're attracting, they can't help but just to come towards you. And so I have so many people yeah. who will sit in my Reiki training and I'll ask them, how did you find me? And they say, I really don't know. Like <laughs> somehow something just popped up on Instagram or whatever. And I don't even use paid yeah. ads on Instagram. So it's not that somehow yep. they just stumble across me and then they resonate with my energy via the small amount that I do post on Instagram or my website, whatever it is, because of course I put my energy into that so they can feel that. Yes, of course. So yeah, yeah. becoming a beacon, I think is the key. And so focusing on yourself Amazing. first and sometimes I think I should be doing something and that little voice of the ego kind of creeps in and it's telling me a story of like maybe I'm procrastinating or I'm being lazy because I'm not doing all the things that I should be doing. But it always turns out that there was no need to do that thing anyway. Like if I'd have done the thing that my brain was telling me to do, it just would have been a complete waste of time and energy because by the time I finished doing it, the course is already sold out or something like that, right? There's always a clear sign when I do that, that you you didn't need to do that. Just keep doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and it's working. <laughs> so it's a really a constant practice of, again, being in trust. That you're, mm-hmm. yeah, when you're in alignment, you become a magnet. And that's the feminine way of being a creative entrepreneur. And we do need to balance it with the masculine. There's definitely things that you still need to do. Yeah, to physically do. Yeah, yeah. of course, there's still all of those things. You know, there's like the sending of the emails or setting up the Zoom link yeah. for a distance healing, setting up my physical space if someone's coming to see yes. me. All of those things yes. are real. But there's definitely space for doing a lot less than we believe yes. if your vibration is at the right level. Yes, I love that because in my surface pattern design course, a, lo- a big question I get all of the time is, like, how do I reach out to clients? How do I pitch to clients? Like, how do I do? And I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah, like, they come to it's you. It's about attracting clients. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It's about let's get you right. Let's get you know your creative side right and mm. um, your energy right, and then yeah, you'll you'll attract the right people to you. So, and that's hard for people's minds initially to be like, huh? Yes. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't have an Instagram presence. I don't have a website yet. I don't have a you know like, and then the mind creeps in. But yeah. Yeah, it's and I've found that over the years is that yeah, like what like why is it so easy to attract clients when yeah, you're not doing that much, but it's um it's so energetically possible. So, yeah, thanks for being such an example of le- like living and creating a business in such an intuitive way because it's what we need to see more of. Yeah, no yes, worries. I agree. Something yes, such that, a beautiful example. Sorry, Sam. Something that really came through to me when you were talking then, Cass, when you mentioned about not having the Instagram profile or not having the website is that um, perfectionism that can come in when people mm-hmm. are starting out and they feel like they have to have all of those things ready before they mm-hmm. actually begin. So that's something I really encourage with my level two students because level two is that practitioner level. They're able to go out into the world and start seeing clients and they straight away focus on all those things that they need to get like their ducks in a row. And I say, forget about all of that. Talk to people around you. Tell them what you're doing. When you speak about it in an authentic way, they're going to see. They're going to see the shifts that are happening in you and they're going to want to know what that is. You know, I want yeah. what you're having type thing. Yeah. And then when you have see your first client, they will talk about it. And then word of mouth becomes the most powerful driver. It's the oh, most powerful I driver. I message my groups last night be like, you have to go see Jonathan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm like, it was so amazing. Like, and so instantly, like 10 more people, like, you know, um, have their eyes on your profile last night. So 
I say that too. Word of mouth is so powerful, yeah, you know, even more powerful than social media. It is. And it's organic. It you know, is. people are genuinely yeah. connecting to your energy. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's been the main driver of my one-on-one Reiki client yeah. business, 100%. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So what would you say at the moment then is the biggest challenge for you Mm. in business or life? Mm. Your beautiful example of this embodiment (laughs) alignment, but you're still human. No, that's it. Of course, there's always (laughs) challenges. So what would you say is the biggest challenge? Okay, (laughs) so 2023 for me really feels like a year of huge expansion in my business and that feels scary. So I feel like I'm at this tipping point where I still have to take care of all aspects of the business myself, what we've been talking about, like all the stuff that you have to do in the background. But at some point in order to allow for that full expansion, I will need to get to that stage of hiring people to do some of the admin Mm -hmm. and the behind the scenes things, you know, look after the money side Mm -hmm. of things so that I can focus more on my soul work, which is the healing, is the teaching, is the service. So at the moment, it's a little bit of a juggling act of all the things, as I'm sure you're all familiar with. There's like too many plates spinning. Sometimes it feels like while I'm doing that energetic work on myself to create space for this expansion to come in and really leaning into the trust that if this expansion is coming, then it means I must be ready for it. I must be ready for this next stage of evolution. Um, So luckily for me, I have the tools, you know, to work on those limiting beliefs or the fear. And I've got my healers that I go to when I need a bit of help. But yeah, it's, it feels like, how do you know when it's right to start investing yeah. or outsourcing certain things? Yeah. That feels like a really, really big leap and a big investment, um, which feels exciting, but definitely scary at the same time. And I'm sure your mind has a lot to say about that with expansion <laughs> as well, because, you know, it's like, you know, or I have, if I'm, if I'm expanding, then I need to attract more people. So do I need to do more Mm. marketing? Do I need to like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm sure there's that because then the expansion starts to put tangible goals on it. And then does that happen in your mind or are you part beyond that? Not so much. (laughs) Now that you've said it, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I'm planting seeds. This is my mind. This is yeah, my mind. Yeah. No, no, I hadn't really gone down that that rabbit hole just yet, but I'm sure there are going to be a lot of things that come up. Yeah, but it's all about just leaning into that discomfort, right? That's where the growth happens. Yeah. I could easily continue cruising along exactly where I am now. Yeah. Like life feels really beautiful. But it's starting to feel a little bit like, oh, I'm in some kind of comfort zone here. So, You're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so things are feeling a little bit too easy and I'm like, okay, I'm ready for the next yep. evolution yep. and I've got some exciting mm-hmm. things in the pipeline. And I think that's it, like the excitement, is making sure that excitement's still there yeah. um, because you can love what you do and cruise along but then – that only lasts so long before you need a little bit of a, like a new adventure yes. and a, a bit of excitement mm. um, and a bit of scariness is good as well. It is. I believe that when you're nervous <laughs> about something, it just means you care about it. So so I was a little bit yeah. nervous coming on this podcast today, but you've made me feel so comfortable. <laughs> Did, you... <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to share anything that's coming up yet? Or Yeah, I can do. So... At the moment, I've been teaching uh, Reiki level one and two, like I mentioned, across Sydney and Coffs for the past year, and it's going so well. But I'm getting to that point where I've got my level two students waiting for the next step. (laughs) So this year, I'm going to be launching a program called Gateway to Mastery. So a container, it's going to be a four-month container to help develop and support Reiki Level 2 students, whether they've trained with me or whether they've trained with someone else, it doesn't matter, to really step into their full power as a healer to get to that point where you might be able to call yourself confidently 
a Reiki master? Because that feels like a really big word to a lot of people to Mm -hmm. say, like, I have mastery Mm -hmm. over my energy and over this healing modality. Um, And currently most Reiki master practitioner courses are just another one day course in the same way that level one and level two are. And sure, you can deliver the content, you can do the attunement in that one day, that's no issue. But what I'm seeing is with level two students at the moment who are out there in the world, they've got all the tools, I can see that they're ready, but they don't feel ready and they don't feel confident enough to start charging, say, $120 for a client to come and see them because they've got this sense of, oh, I'm just new at this. Like, Why would anyone want to pay that much to come and see me? Even though they've got their certificate, they've got all the things, I've equipped them fully. So this Gateway to Mastery program is going to be this nurturing place that's full of group healings, one-on-one healings, Um, one-on-one mentorship, supervised practice hours, all the things that I can see that people need to really clear away those limiting beliefs and step into their power so that they can really go out into the world and say, hi world, I'm a Reiki master. I'm ready. Yeah, Yeah. I'm ready. I'm here. I can hold space for whatever my client is going to show up with because people show up with all of their stuff right and you need to feel like strong enough in your own energy to hold that space to not take on all of their stuff to not feel drained by it all of these things so I really want to offer a place for people to feel fully empowered Um, because for me going on that journey my master practitioner was only that one day And so I did a lot of healing and a lot of stuff behind the scenes to get myself to that point. So knowing what it was that I needed that I had to seek out and do that work on my own, now I understand what it is that people need to be supported. So that's what I want to offer. So I'm super excited. I'm going to be launching that over the next couple of months. I don't have a launch date just yet, but it's all in the works. And yeah, it just feels like, my purpose at the moment is to get as many empowered healers out there in the world doing the Mm -hmm. healing work because there must be Mm -hmm. millions of people on this planet who have their Reiki level one, Reiki level two, and they don't use it. Mm, Yeah. So my role or my intention is to get as many people out there actually doing the healing on themselves and others actually practicing. Yeah. 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 And actually there's another way that my business is involved evolving that feels really exciting. So I've touched a little bit on uh, women's circles. So I was running yeah. women's circles in Sydney at that yoga studio that I've spoken about alongside my friend Carmen. She's one of my good friends and it was just a joy to facilitate those circles alongside her. So when I moved to Coffs, I missed that and I wanted to continue that energy and that sense of community that we'd been cultivating through the women's circles. But it felt really scary to do it without her next to me. I was like, oh, no, I don't have someone yet in Coffs that I feel aligned with fully to sit beside and do this work. So I guess I need to do it by myself. So that was another one of those leaps, you know, of just trusting yeah. and being like, look, I this is something that I want in my life to have this community of women around me. So I guess I'm doing this by myself. (laughs) Um, So I did that again with the support of um, Lauren and Kai at Coffs Yoga and Pilates. I uh, offered their beautiful space. And the community that has evolved through those offerings is so beautiful. So I've been offering women's circles in the studio for the last 12 months and I've got veterans who have come since the first one and they still come every single time you know and they will form their own connections and that community of support of women but then each time I run a new one there's a few new faces that show up so the community is constantly growing and expanding and the magic that uh, has come out of that for people the shifts that people have seen in their lives from the magic that we create in the circle and the support of the women around them that has been really amazing and I just feel so much in my happy place when I'm holding space for these rituals and these ceremonies because I think for most people ritual and ceremony is something that's kind of lacking 
in our lives and it just adds a really beautiful richness and feeling of connection when you do bring Mm. it in um so yeah so it feels like that has really taken on a life of its own and it's evolving a little bit in terms of some other collaborations with other local business women here in the Coffs area so um I can add essentially this ritual and ceremony, this idea of a women's circle to any other offering. So if you're another type of entrepreneur, you have a different offering, but you want to combine it with this ceremony, then you can collaborate with me or hire me or however it is that we come to the arrangement. Yeah. So I've already started Mm -hmm. to do it a little bit and also on a more personal level, um, for mama blessings or baby blessings, naming ceremonies, whatever it is. If you don't have, you know, your best friend or your sister who feels confident in running that type of thing or holding that space, Mm -hmm. then I can come Mm -hmm. in, get to know you and create that beautiful sense of connection. And not only with women, um, this year or last year, sorry, 2022 in September, I ran my first ever mixed men and women's circle which felt like a big jump and a big evolution for me that I felt ready to hold that space for men as well. Um, It was incredible. 50-50 men and women showed up, um, which was really amazing to see. So, yeah, that's really lighting me up at the moment and I'm excited to be offering that more and more in different ways. And this is something, again, that I haven't gone out and looked for or sought this out. Like I've just... Being there, being myself in the women's circles and these opportunities are coming towards me. People are asking Mm -hmm. me like, hey, can you come and facilitate for my mama blessing or whatever it is? And I'm like, yes, oh, my God. (laughs) Such an honour to be asked. So I think that's another reminder that if you're just doing what you love and you're just embodying, Mm -hmm. you know, your true essence and these opportunities will present themselves and doors will begin to open and it might not look the way that you expected your business to look you know I didn't expect to to be doing mama blessings for example that's something that's never on my radar but then as soon as someone asks me I'm like yes this feels perfectly in alignment so it's allowing your business Mm -hmm. to actually go through those different avenues and sort of meander around a little bit in flow rather than having a fixed idea of how you want your business to look I think that's really important too Yeah, Mm. Sam and I spoke about that on the last episode about Mm. setting intentions and about how we're less goal orientated now Mm. and more try to feel into what our business wants to be and then allow that surprise and delight Mm. to come so that it's like, oh, I I didn't know I was going to go down this path. (laughs) Yeah, okay, let's let's go. Yeah, let's go. (laughs) Surprise and delight. I love that so much. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. that's perfect. Um, so second last question, Joe. Um, it's been such an amazing conversation. It's the work you're doing in this world is so amazing. Um, but advice for creative entrepreneurs. Um, we have such a mixture of listeners here from all, all different walks of life in the creative industries. Um, mm-hmm. So what would be your biggest piece of advice of, of someone who maybe hasn't leapt, leapt into mm. this? work yet or or um and just going on that journey sure so i think if it is accessible to you invest in a business coach so when i first started i felt so overwhelmed by all of the things like setting up the website getting my ABN, like all the things that you have to do. Um, So I sat down, luckily for me, one of my good friends, Eva Shafroth, she's a business coach. She's at the Creative Mindset Coach on Instagram. She really helped me get to the core of why. Why did I want to offer what I was offering? And she helped me to see what my unique magic is because, of course, there's hundreds of or thousands of yoga teachers in Sydney right Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. offering Reiki and that felt overwhelming like that imposter syndrome was definitely there at the start like why would someone specifically choose to practice or learn from me so having those sessions with Eva she really helped me to realize what it is that's my unique magic that I have to offer and she actually worked Mm -hmm. with my human design and my Enneagram to help me understand like what my branding expression was um, and how to best approach my work so that was absolutely invaluable and 
kind of stemming out of that, I would also say throw away the rule book in terms of what hours you think you should be working and allow yourself to (laughs) lean into your natural cycles. So my brain naturally switches on at 6 p.m. So what do you think happens if I sit down at my laptop at 9 a.m.? Like not much. (laughs) I can try and force myself to do the things, but it feels like I'm kind of trudging uphill like it doesn't feel good to me it's not in my natural flow so as much as you can let yourself be guided by your own body your own energy levels and find a rhythm that works for you and you might have other factors of course like if you do have kids or if you have another job that is going to limit that but still as much as possible like if you are feeling really tired and really burnt out give yourself permission to rest Even if you've got on the to-do list, this is what I'm supposed to do today. If you really allow yourself to rest tomorrow or the next day, you're going to have so much more capacity, so much more motivation and inspiration to actually do the things. And I think this, we touched on this in your session yesterday, Cass, that creativity, divinely sparked creativity actually comes from a void space like the cosmic womb Mm -hmm. right that's where the spark Mm -hmm. of creation comes from so to access that you need rest and you need stillness Mm -hmm. to allow the downloads to actually come in whereas if you're feeling depleted you're feeling tired and you're just going into your mind space to look for the things things are not going to flow so that would be my main piece of, of advice business coach or even if it's just someone in your life who you trust to bounce ideas off if you don't have the money to invest Mm. you've usually got a friend or someone around you so that you don't feel like you're completely alone and then yeah leaning into that natural flow that would be my two main pieces of advice love it beautiful so to finish off this really incredible chat it's been amazing talking with you We would love to know what your hope is for the collective in 2023. Mm, Such beautiful questions today. (laughs) My hope for the collective in 2023 is that we can go gently. The last few years have been so huge energetically and it kind of feels like we're emerging out of this long, heavy, dark tunnel. I don't know if you guys feel that way. (laughs) I certainly do. (laughs) So, okay. (laughs) So there is some really beautiful, fresh energies coming in at the moment with what's going on in the cosmos. Um, So we are being supported um, like Mars and Mercury, Uranus going direct, the new moon that we just had. We are being supported in moving forward with new projects, but we don't need to rush into it like all guns blazing. Mm. So I would ask yourself, how can I nurture the seeds that I'm planting now Mm -hmm. and go slowly with self-care as your priority and go gently into whatever it is that you're calling in for 2023? Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about, I think quite a lot, remember that your external reality is a reflection of your inner world. So focus on doing the things that light you up that fill you up, the things that raise your frequency. So then you become that magnet for everything that you desire. So doing less, attracting more. As I said earlier, that's more of the feminine um, way. Yeah, you mentioned yesterday that the feminine year Mm, as well. mm -hmm. Um, Yes. The rabbit. Yeah, in in Chinese or lunar astrology, it's the year of the yin water rabbit. So it's really bringing in this softer, more feminine approach. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to do all the exciting things. There's always the yang within the yin, but it is just asking us to go a little bit slower and to really take care of ourselves first as our first priority. Yeah. Absolutely. I we must be receiving from the same place. Always Joanna, because I have definitely received that exact same intention for the collective this Beautiful. year. Beautiful. Just pacing ourselves and going gently. Mm. 
More than ever. And with yourself, going gently with yourself. That's it. Being kind yeah. to yourself, mm-hmm. not beating yourself up. Yes. Like I said, if you don't tick off all the things on the list because you take a nap instead, that's mm-hmm. all part of it. Like you, especially yes. for spiritual entrepreneurs who are doing it on their own, you are your business. So your body, yeah. your mind, your soul deserves to be fully invested in on an energetic level with the food that you're eating, the way that you're taking care of yourself, that needs to be number one. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, Joe, um, where can they find you? Where can they book with you? Sure. How can they get? I'd love to connect with your listeners more. And I hang out quite a lot on Instagram. So I'm at joanna.tolly. So I always post on there things that I'm running you know my yoga schedule is on there um in my link tree actually in my bio has links to book in with me for one-on-one Reiki whether that's in person or via distance in the way that we did with UCAS so all of that is accessible via there and my website's joannatolly.com so very easy to remember if you can remember my name (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> have all the yeah yeah awesome Amazing. yeah and of course like if you're listening and you have any questions about anything that I've spoken about or just anything that really resonated I would love to hear from you I'm always open for chats Amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. This has been so incredible for us to talk to you. So, you know, I'm sure the listeners are just, you know, loving it as well. Thank you so much for making me feel so comfortable. And yeah, it has been really delicious chats. I've loved every moment of it. I feel really lit up by the energy of the whole conversation. So thank you so much for creating this space. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Thank you and take care. Thank you. We'll see you next time. You too. Bye. Bye.